Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to look at one of the ways we can display three boxes side by side on a web page. And that seems kind of specific, but a lot of websites do this. So I'm looking at this Credit Union Bank website, and they've got these three display boxes, obviously promotional items right here side by side, and they're nicely balanced in the space. Now, using the inspector tool, um, I can see that there is an info section right there, and I know it's tough to see, but basically, um, that's a uh, it's a box container, and obviously a div, and it's a hundred. They've got it set one hundred percent wide. That's cool. Uh, they got box sizing Bora box. That's fine. Margin three m zero. So that's three m's of margin, top and bottom, zero left and right. And they've got uh, some interesting padding: zero top and bottom, five percent left and right. So, and when I just hover that, you can see those little green sections show up. So that's the the padding. All right, interesting to know. So now we can look at one of these three boxes and that's called the info box. So they've got a div in there, class equals info box. And the interesting things about these, let's see. They've got position relative, not terribly essential for the overall layout, but they're probably positioning either the pictures and the text block inside. And they're using float left. That's kind of an older school technique but um, as we can see quite effective so yeah that's the one we're going to do and nothing wrong with using float versus grid versus flex box or things like that some may be easier to implement than others but customers aren't going to your source code they're not looking to see did you arrange those boxes with a float or a, a grid or a flex box so whatever works and is easy to implement, I say, is the way to go. And the width for each of these boxes is 33.3%, close to 100% total. And uh, yeah, text align and color. Let's give it a shot. Now, I already have a blank page set up. So I'm going to jump over to the markup here. And I'm going to create a div. You could use article. You could use section. You know, nothing wrong with that. Div, yeah, good standard generic block element. Class equals info section and within that I'm gonna have three divs um, info box times three there we go so now I've got three of those divs I don't need to worry about putting any content of those divs that's not part of this particular video but we'll tackle that later okay I think I'm done with the HTML side of things now let me jump up here to my styles let's see info section. I believe I already forgot what I called it. Yep. Info underscore section. Excellent. Now in the short term, so that we can see this, I'm going to go ahead and give it a background color. And let's see, I will do um, pink. Sounds great. And I'm going to give it a margin of 100 pixels top and bottom, and then zero pixels left and right. So this big info section should now be quite noticeable on here. Actually, it's not going to be noticeable because I don't have any height. Since there's no content, it's collapsed on itself. So let me do this. In addition to the margin, I will give it a min height of 250 pixels. Now we can see it. Okay, so there we go. And because it's 100% wide, which is its default nature, it will fill up the browser window, the viewport, um, just fine. All right, feeling pretty good about that. Now, I know from looking at some other sections of that bank's website, they actually had the body of the page had a max width of 970 pixels on there. I could put a max width of 970 pixels here, and it would be more inclined to look kind of like that. You, know, you can see it's, it's kind of off to the side, so I'm going to adjust my margins, and I'll make this... 100 pixels top and bottom, auto margin left and right. That's going to center that section right there. Great. Now let's style.info box. Let's confirm that's what I called them. Yep, class equals info underscore box. Great. Okay, so for my info boxes, I'm going to set the width of these to be 33.3% because that's what I saw before on that bank website. So if my info section parent is 30 is 970 pixels wide, each of these boxes is going to be taking up about a third of that space. And I do need to give them some height, some structure. So I will set a min height and I'll do 250 pixels as well. 
Now, in order to visualize these boxes, they need to have some kind of background color or border. When doing these kind of tight sizings, I don't like to use border so much because border can get included in that width. So, unless you've got the uh, the box sizing border box property set. But let me do this. I'm going to do dot info box nth child one background color green. There we go. Let's do that. And I want these other ones to be different colors. So I'm just going to copy that, paste and paste, two and three, and then green, blue, and red. Okay, so we should be able to visualize it. Now they're good, they should be one on top of the other. And sure enough, they are, because that's what block elements want to do. They want to be one on top of the other. So one of the things they had on that bank website was for those info boxes, they had a float left on there and that got them side by side. Now notice you can't see any of that pink anymore. It's because the pink is completely behind those elements. If that pink box was a little bit taller, then you'd start to see it peek out a little bit there, but no need to have that. In fact, really no need to have any height on that one. So that was a pretty quick and easy way to get those three boxes side by side. Take care.